Can we center? Yep. Can we? As, a, as an active group participation event, let's do that. Maybe the rest of you just know that there's nothing wrong with you. Is that what happened? <laughs> why, why would I read a book about something I already know? Okay. Well, anyway, we can talk about that later. In the meantime, would you just uh, close your eyes or let them drop down and go slightly out of focus and allow your attention to turn to the breath, to find the breath in your body? Just feel your body as the breath enters you. Feel your body gently expanding. And it's full and then you let it go. Your body gently contracts. just to sink back into whatever is supporting you. And in case that happens to be your feet, <coughs> to see if you can just relax all of the parts of the body that aren't required to, to stand there. Just breathing. So simple, so ever-present. And of course, the secret to breathing, the thing that makes breathing so powerful, is keeping your attention with the breath as you're breathing. Allowing all of your attention and awareness to be with the breath, the feeling of the breath, that the attention wants to wander off and go to all sorts of other places and things. You just notice that and gently bring your attention back to the breath. everything other than right here, right now, this breath. And then without leaving your breath, attention to remain with the breath. Would you let arise in conscious awareness to just come to you, to just appear for you? The answer to this question, how do I want to feel? Again, no thinking about it, if you can. Anything that 
comes from a quick trip up to the mind to figure it out. Just let that go. Continue to breathe. And allow the awareness just to float into consciousness. How do you want to feel? again. All the attention and awareness on the breath. One more nice, long, deep, full breath. Being right here, right now. When you get to the bottom of that exhalation, if you would open your eyes, please. Anybody uh, get a response to that? How you how you want to feel? How do you want to feel? Um, exotically wealthy. Exotically wealthy? That's how you want to feel. Hmm. That's a feeling. How will you feel when you're exotically exotically wealthy? Is that the, okay? How will you feel when that happens? Full. Full? Full of? Love. Love. So you will be full of love when you are exotically wealthy. I could help you get there without the first part of that if you wanted. <laughs> exotically wealthy is often harder to come by than love. Okay, good. Thank you. Who else? How do you want to feel? Anybody? Yes? Joyful. Joyful. Good. Good. This is a nice, good. simple, I just feel good. Yeah. Let's not get carried away with ourselves. No. <laughs> no. 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 Yeah, you've already done that. <laughs> yeah. All right, somebody else over here. Contented. Yeah. Contented. Excited. Excited. Okay. Serene. Serene. Peaceful. Peaceful. Ecstatic. Happy. Gentle. Gentle. Happy. Happy. Satisfied. Satisfied. All right. A lot of satisfaction going around. All right. Anybody else know how you want to feel? Vibrant. Vibrant. Spacious. Not other than how I feel right now. Not other than how you feel right now. And and how what does that feel like? Well, you ask the question during the meditation so Yes. But it, it so, so it, it feels like that. it feels like spaciousness. Spaciousness? It feels like breathing. Breathing? So whatever is there, you want to feel that. You want to right. be with that. I don't, I don't want to be other than that. You don't want to be other than that. All right. Very good. Anybody else? Alive. Yeah? Alive. Alive. And I saw a hand back there. Whole. Whole. Okay. The rest of you? It's <laughs> been covered. It's been covered. Yeah. Uh, all of the above. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Way in the back. Accepting. Accepting. Compassionate. Okay. Anything else now? Playful. Playful. Is this, it could be a going, going, gone. You didn't claim it. <laughs> Sad moment. Yes. Content. All right. Yes. Defenseless. Defenseless. Wow. Balanced. Balanced. Yes. Settled. Settled. Passionate. Passionate. All right. Do you know how you know that? <laughs> the 
those of you who know how you want to feel, do you know how you know that? Because you've experienced it. Yeah? Is that true? Were you aware of going to your experience of it in order to know what that is? Okay. Now, if I ask you another question, um, so there is how you want to feel, and you know that that's how you want to feel because you felt that way before, and so you feel it again to make sure, yep, yeah, that's how I, yep, yeah, that's it, that's the one, that's the one I want. <laughs> Okay, so uh, where did you, where do you feel that? Heart? Okay. Gut? Gut? Okay. A little lower. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. Other people have the everywhere experience? Yeah. Okay. Heart? Gut? Everywhere. Yeah? <laughs> okay. So you know that you have, we have just talked through in a very short period of time one of the great secrets of the universe. Do you know that? <laughs> so what people believe, what people are taught to believe is that you have to have certain circumstances in order to have a certain feeling. Isn't that true? So a lot of people, for instance, believe that out there in the future somewhere, when some particular thing happens, then they will feel the way they want to feel. Have you ever, have you ever been told that? So for instance, if you work really hard, if you what? If you work really hard, if you, what else? What else do you have to do? Follow all the rules. If you follow all the rules, very important. Although you notice the most rewarded people are the ones who follow none of the rules. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> the rest of us reward them. <laughs> okay, so what else? You work hard, you follow the rules, you save. Worry. Worry. Very important. <laughs> Worry. It's a lot like holding your mouth right, right? When you're gonna, yeah? Anything else? What else? Does that cover it? You be good. Be good. Yeah, not don't feel good. Be good. That's really different, isn't it? <laughs> Feeling good and being good are two entirely different subjects. Okay? Anything else you need to do? Yeah? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. <laughs> Incredibly important. Right up there with worry. <laughs> yeah. Worry and sacrifice. Very good. What else? Don't want it for selfish reasons. Yeah. Don't I mean, want it for selfish. Yes, be selfish. selfless the entire way on your way to getting everything you always wanted. This <laughs> 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 is good. It's so true. Never think of yourself. No, never, never. Never think of yourself. <laughs> While thinking of yourself constantly, right? Because how are you going to not think of yourself except by thinking of yourself constantly, right? You have to make sure you're not thinking of yourself. The only way you can do that is when thinking about what you're not thinking about. Okay, so this is good, right? But in a few, just a few short moments, you proved all of that wrong, right? Because by being asked a couple of very simple questions, you went to the experience that you want to be having. Yeah? So, are you, you seeing where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. There would be absolutely no reason not to live there. Right? If you can go there anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the way you want to feel. Or the alternative behavior would be worry, sacrifice, um, what were some of the other top favorites? Saving, uh, working hard, being, good, following being the rules. good, following the rules, yeah. So the, what, what, what do you think when you consider it from that perspective? Anybody? Very hard. It's it's very hard. <laughs> Yet uh, foolish. Yes. To go through to put oneself through all of those unnecessary steps. And you have to delay gratification. You must delay gratification. 
Yes. Very likely until you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just hope that something is going for you at that point. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay? So this is the now. Let's just talk about that, shall we? I've, I've finished my list of questions for you. So anything that arise when you consider what we've done so far? Yes. What well, I keep coming back to is the <laughs> fact that our traditions here in the West in uh, Christian influenced situation have been sending us down the wrong path for a very, very long time. And I have a I've thought about that for decades and it, it's only just become really clear to me uh, since I started reading your books and um, it's, it's really difficult to, to think of us going down a blind alley for 2,000 years. But it yeah. really seems like that's what happened. Well, it, here's the thing though. I, I, I agree with you about the blind alley. I don't think, however, we can blame it on either Christianity or the West uh, because people seem to have a tendency toward creating this kind of situation for themselves seem to have done for as much history as we know about and seem to have done all over the world. So it seems more a human tendency, the human tendency that creates the structures, the social structures that will enable us to find our way down that blind alley. You know, I, I studied for, uh, I studied in the Tibetan tradition for two decades now and from what I understand from the Tibetans, like the Dalai Lama has stated <coughs> publicly quite a few times, that it's very surprised when he found out how Westerners have a low self-image and self-hate, and doesn't seem to think that that existed in the uh, well, Tibetan society. Yeah. Actually, I, I think, I and mean, we can all go home and Google this tonight, but I think he's actually <laughs> retracted that. Uh, yeah, because he had a number of people point out to him how it manifests in a different culture. Do you remember what he said? Uh, something along the lines of, well, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Our culture. Uh, now you're you're not going anywhere with her, are you? Good. Stay right here. There you go. Thank you. Um, so it's it's often difficult for people to see from one cultural perspective what people in another culture are doing. Um, if the thing that I think is unique about uh, our culture, in particular, is that. You know, people, we are the most privileged people ever to have lived on this planet, okay? Um, and then on top of that, there is the ability to communicate every hiccup that happens uh, around the world in a matter of seconds. And so to me, now this is all you know, I just make this stuff up because I spend too much time alone. <laughs> aside from that, um, you know, we are in the unique position in this culture to have everything that people have been striving for. And to find out dissatisfaction is not a matter of externals. Yeah. yeah, so I, kind of what I was just playing with you all about, which is, you know, when I get to, then I will be. So uh, the idea that one of my obsessions, one process doesn't lead to another. So when I finish whatever, I'll be happy. No, actually, when I finish whatever, I will have finished whatever. <laughs> and the odds are really good that I will feel pretty much the way I always feel. <laughs> and then if you're not if you're not careful and paying good attention, the voice is in your head. Everybody with me on this? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the voice that's talking to you in your head says, Oh well, 
uh, first of all, it's your fault because there is something wrong with you. And, and then what you really need to do is this other thing, that when you, after you do that, then you'll feel the way you want to feel. Um, so people getting to the place of, uh, in fact, this is, this is where I am in practice now, um, which is, so don't let me lose track of our conversation, but I want to make a little, I like go down a, an alley that isn't a dead end. Um, <laughs> so the thing that I am most passionate about in practice, um, so when There's Nothing Wrong With You came out, I think it's like 18 years ago now, uh, the idea of self-hate really wasn't in our culture. Uh, at this point, there's hardly a therapist anywhere, at least in this country, who isn't talking to people about self-hatred. It's now found its way into most Eastern spiritual traditions, and a lot of uh, Christianity is, is recognizing self-hatred as a, as a deal. This, this thing that we're into now, I think, is going to be... Now, I, I just said this to somebody. I may not live long enough to see this, but I think it's going to be the most revolutionary thing in uh, awareness practice, psychology, spirituality to come along in a really long time. And it's self-mentoring through recording and listening, which is what the latest book, uh, What You Practice Is What You Have, is about. Um, so the transformative nature of talking <laughs> to yourself, <laughs> not talking to yourself. Okay? It's not this talking to yourself. It's actually uh, mentoring the part of you that has been so deeply conditioned, socially conditioned and karmically conditioned. Um, in a, it, what's happening with people is that it is enabling them to find the deepest, wisest parts of themselves and to gain access to those directly. So instead of uh, Here's my favorite thing about it, okay? It's free. <laughs> You've got to appreciate that, huh? Yeah, something that's going to revolutionize humanity and is free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see? Love, free. No, don't put those two together if you're old enough to remember the 60s. That's, <laughs> that's actually not what I'm talking about. Um, so, what people have been conditioned to do is, is believe there's something wrong with me, okay? Now see if, see if this resonates at all. There's something wrong with me, I need to hide it, okay? I go out, I look at all of you, and you seem fine. <laughs> it doesn't occur to me that you're also hiding it. So I'm walking around in this world that I'm taught I have to live in, of acting as if I'm okay while living in a world of information that says I'm not. Do, do any of you relate to that? Yeah? Okay, so of course I don't think it's an accident that that happens, um, but it's happened and it's happened for a really long time. So everybody is isolated, uh, they are they are off on their own, dealing with demons, uh, deeply ashamed, feeling bad about it. You know, it's your fault. Your life doesn't work, and it's your fault. Uh, you are this way, and it's your fault. And um, you need to find somebody else, somebody who is wise, somebody who is, God help us all, enlightened, okay? Uh, who is going to tell you what you need to know in order finally to be all right. Is this true? And if you can find that person and gain access to them, you will believe what? How much of what they tell you? You know, say you, you, you have a spiritual teacher or say you've, uh, you know, you've got a great counselor or therapist or that sort of thing. Uh, and you go there to this person and they tell you these things and how much of it do you actually take in and change with? About five to ten percent. Would people agree with that? Is that a fair? Yeah, so you feel better a little bit for a little while, but pretty much the whole thing goes back, right? 
And you probably, if you're like the rest of us, and you are, <laughs> uh, as, as you're feeling good about whatever it is that you got, there's a voice in your head telling you how wrong you are for believing that. Is this true? Making a huge case for, well, what about this, and what about that, and what, if, well, what about this, and don't, what about the time that you, and why do you think you're going to, and how is that going to change for you? You've never been any different, and why are you going to, what, what is it, it, come on, get over it, forget it. In fact, if you really want to be gutsy now, anybody want to be gutsy now? <laughs> Have you ever heard a voice say, you are hopeless, why don't you give up, why don't you just kill yourself? Anybody ever heard it? Come on, gutsy people, raise your hand. It's typical. It is so common, it, it, it would terrify everybody uh, to find out how absolutely common it is, okay? We would be terrified right before the moment of liberation, <laughs> all right? So uh, self-mentoring bypasses all of that nonsense. You know, uh, if you imagine there is somebody that you really, really, really care about. Really, really, really care about. And, and you can see that they do not have the same opinion of themselves that you have of them. Anybody know anybody like that? <laughs> and something happens to them and you hear yourself saying things that you know are not only compassionate and kind, they're wise and true. Do you know that place? Yes. And you can see that they don't hear it. But you know that it's true, what you're saying to them, about them. Okay? Yes. And so what this process of self-mentoring does is enable you to access that deep level of wisdom and compassion, the wisdom, love, and compassion that animates you, you can access that for yourself. Yeah? So you don't have to live in a conversation of what's wrong with you, of what's missing, of past sins and crimes, uh, the way you're going to screw up the future, how it's never going to work, you're never going to actually have what you want. Live in that conversation with a few moments of relief because you're talking to somebody who has a more accurate opinion of you and your life. You can actually live in a conversation that is authentic, that is wise, that is kind, that is compassionate, that is life itself, the very life force that animates you, speaking to you through your own voice. So um, when this book came out, uh, first came out, uh, I was, went to a retreat in um, Connecticut. And I mean, it was hot off the press. And I had a box of, of the books shipped to that retreat. Now, anybody who's ever been on retreat with me knows one of the guidelines is there's no reading and writing while you're on retreat <laughs> with me, okay? No journaling, no, no any of that sort of thing. Uh, because no matter how great the information, it's a distraction. It takes us out of just bringing all of our attention and awareness to the, to the moment. And so I had these, these books sent. And the first night of the retreat, I handed them out to people. Okay? And they, they truly, they, they thought it was a trick. Like, <laughs> people think Zen has this evil uh, element to it. Okay, so she's just saying that. She's giving you this book, and she's going to see if you take it. And I don't know what she's going to do after that. But it's going to be ugly. So uh, I said, now, uh, Jan mentioned, our books are, on the surface, not challenging. So if I said to somebody, read this tonight before I see you in the morning, most people could do that, OK? So uh, people came back, and, and uh, there was a chap in the, uh, on the retreat who was about my age. And he'd been a psychotherapist all of his life. And uh, nice, 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 nice man. And uh, he said, you know, it's really interesting what you're saying. So I could tell where that was going. Uh, <laughs> really interesting what you're saying. Uh, but you know, I'm a journaler. I've been journaling for 35 years. And you know, journaling is really 
and it's what really works for me. <coughs> I said, okay, well, that's great. I certainly wouldn't <coughs> want you to stop journaling, however, <laughs> not for the next four days. And um, uh, I said, well, you know, you've, you've, you've taken time out of your life, you've paid money to be here, so how about if you do this, do this thing that I'm asking you to do? He said, okay. So the next day, he came back to group and lifted his hands up to that he wanted to say something, and he got about, I would say, eight words into his first sentence, and the tears just started running down his, his cheeks. And um, he said, you know, I've been doing this stuff for a long time. He said, to hear that compassion and kindness directed toward me in my own voice, I couldn't so I tell that story every chance I get because people don't believe it. And the amount of resistance that I've encountered with this very simple little, you, you think, you know, if I said, I have this spade, um, I'll give it to you. And if you use it in your garden with no effort at all, you will increase the, the uh, produce from your garden by 150%. And people would say, you know, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well thought out. <laughs> so uh, I have never encountered the kind of resistance that I've encountered to this work. It's just unbelievable. So uh, the next thing I will tell you, and then I'm actually going to ask you what you want to talk about this evening. But the, the next project, the one that's going to follow this, um, is a project where we are going to online map the contents of conditioned mind. So that everybody can get it once and for all that there is nothing unique going on in here. Okay, not only is the content identical, the process is identical. Okay, so the words that you hear in here are the same words that everybody is hearing. Right? So uh, I invite you to stay tuned for that because I think it's going to be one of the most fun things. So here, I'll tell you how it came about. We were kidding. So the, how many of you have done the email class, the Time to Feel Good? Okay, so, uh, you know, we're, we're going along. There's the first exercise. I don't know what it is. And, uh, and it starts. Uh, oh, it was about resistance, wasn't it? Uh, I don't have the time. I'm too busy. Uh, it's too hard. I won't understand it. It won't make any difference. Um, it's too hard. I'm too busy. I'll do it later. It won't make any difference. I don't have the time, I'm too busy, it's too hard, I won't understand. I mean pages and pages, there were 500 people in the class, um, and I respond to every one of them. So I got, you know, I got deeply grounded in, in the language <laughs> going on in people's heads, and finally I just thought, whew, you know, it got hard to come up with a, a creative response other than just, God, let's get over this, okay, <laughs> just as quickly as we can. So we were kidding that it, it's like a Chinese menu. You know, you go into a Chinese restaurant, and uh, I'll have a number 54 and uh, two of the 23s and, uh, and a seven. Okay, so we said, this is, you know, we'll do this with the content of conditioned mind. You know, so we get together and we say, how are you? Oh, I've been in 34 <laughs> all day long. <laughs> so we don't have to tell the stories anymore. You know? uh, we all know what the story is. <laughs> it's fun. All right, now, that was a big launch, but you know, I'm seldom, I mean, I'm always excited about what I do, and I'm always passionate about what the, you know, the latest project is and that sort of thing. Uh, but this, I am just, I am just so lit up about, I can hardly stand myself. So, ordinarily, I would pretty much come in and say, what do you want to talk about this evening? Because, you know, but I had a lot that I wanted to tell you about. So, now that we've taken care of that and met my needs, <laughs> we can hear something from you. So, what would you like to talk about today? Oh, should we finish our conversation? Or was there more? 
No, that's, that's fine. I'm... Are we good? Okay. All right. Good. If you think something, let me know. Because I did interrupt you. No question. But I do have something. Okay. <laughs> Let's start here. A couple things, actually. During the email class that, that just finished up, um, there was one response in there where somebody asked about forgiveness.